the Board Game Captain, and today I'm going to be reviewing and talking about and telling you how to play the alien role-playing game from Free League Publishing. Now, first off, the first thing I want to do is I want to give a big thank you to Free League Publishing for sending me this review copy of the alien role-playing game. I have been super excited for it. You guys who watch my channel know this. I've done a bunch of videos uh, leading up to this all the way back with a news video originally when they very first just announced that this was going to be a thing. I was super excited. So a uh, big thank you to Free League for sending me this review copy. Now, the Alien, uh, the Alien role-playing games game director was Thomas Harenstam. Uh, the setting writer was Andrew E.C. Gaska. The lead artist was Martin Grip, and the graphic designer was Christian Granith. Rules design was by Taron, uh, Thomas Harenstam as well. Um, and then there's a there's a lot, a lot of credits in here because a lot of people worked on this. I'm going to show you the credit page so you can see everybody involved, those I mentioned and those I didn't. We'll do a quick, quick look if you want to see everybody involved. Now, first things first. What is in the Alien role-playing game? So, this is a proper tabletop pen and paper a uh, role-playing game. This is has two methods of playing it. You can play it as uh, cinematic one-offs. Uh, think a single game for a convention or a party that plays like a horror movie, like the first Alien movie. It very much is like that. And this also has the ability to play campaigns. Campaigns, though, in this seem to be much more oriented to being a self-contained specific number of games like a small campaign with a definite end because so if, if you were to compare it to say a game that you play with ongoing campaigns that can go on for years like Pathfinder or Dungeons and Dragons those would be like ongoing series with no end in sight this would be more like a mini series more like a one season series because you would you would go through the campaign uh, where your enemies during most of the campaign would be creatures other than the aliens, like wildlife, or human enemies, like corporations, pirates, criminals, um, law enforcement, if you're the criminals, etc., until you run into the xenomorphs in the last game, and then things are going to, you know, get really serious really quickly. Um, and that, that's, that's what's in here. So we're going to have a look at each section. I'm going to tell you what exactly it entails as you go through the book. So the first section is Space is Hell. Now Space is Hell uh, gives you an idea of, of what it's like to live in the alien universe, what the different careers are, and, and, and what it would be like to work in those careers. Things like, say, space truckers from the, from the first alien movie, or marines from aliens, uh, etc as well as you know being an agent of a corporation or or something other of that sort uh, then it has some some ideas on what it's like to be the game master now the game master in this uh, is known as the game mother a fun little reference to the AI computer systems that were always called mother in the movies uh, but also still abbreviated as GM because you are game mother which is kind of cool uh, then it, it, it gives a brief explanation of, of the cinematic play versus campaign play, like I just talked about uh, a minute ago. Then it gives some ideas of the sort of themes. And the main themes they want you to promote with this game are space horror, sci-fi action, and a sense of wonder. And of course, all of those things can come up in a single game. Now, it, it, then it has an area that goes into the, you know, what is a role-playing game? If this is your first role-playing game, how, how does a role-playing game work? Uh, what's in, uh, what does it entail? Then the next chapter is your character. So here you start working on building characters, and this can be useful for either mode of play, because if you're designing your own cinematic one-off, you're going to make a bunch of pre-gen characters for people to choose, or if you're going to do a campaign, you're going to want the players to make their own characters. So it goes through, you know, the core concepts of making a character, um, things like customizing what your character looks like, their name, you know, their, their, um, their personal agenda, their friends and rivals in the group, which is something you should really work out together with the group as a whole. You guys figure out who's your character's best friend, who's their main rival. Uh, very important for uh, 
remembering the relationships for when you're doing role playing because this game does promote role playing which is great it's not just a crunchy beat em up it is about becoming your character then you have of course your gear uh gaining experience and leveling up if you're playing a campaign versus a cinematic one-off then it has all of the basic types of characters, their version of character classes, which are Colonial Marine, Colonial Marshal, Company Agent, a kid, so you can be like Newt, uh, a medic, officer, pilot, roughneck, or scientist. So, for instance, Ripley would have probably been a pilot based on how she was designed for the, sh for the movies, while... Uh, while say, um, Yafet Kodo's character would have been a roughneck. And of course, all the Marines from the second movie would have been colonial Marines. And Burke from the second movie would have been a company agent. Now, there's also rules in here for you to be a android, which is really cool. And if you're an android, you could either be a secret android like Ash, where, you have, where you're pretending to be human, and until it's revealed that you're an android, you're trying to perfectly simulate being a human, or you can be an open android like Bishop in the second movie. Both are possible. Um, usually the secret android would be something that uh, would, would happen during a cinematic one-off. And it would be the sort of thing where you pick a character and then as the game master takes each of you aside uh, into another room to explain some, you know, your personal motivations and such, they tell you, Psst, by the way, you're secretly an android. And it's actually really cool to run a character like that. Um, at this point, I have played this game. I have game mastered it. And I have read it cover to cover. So FYI, uh, that is awesome. I have experienced that and it's really cool. Okay, then you've got a section on the skills. So it goes through the rules of how uh, rolling skills work, uh, of how stress works, of how pushing your luck to re-roll skills work and how that gives you more stress, how opposed roles work, and also what each of the skills are capable of doing. The, the gist of the way the skill system works in this is it's all six-sided dice. You have a bunch of six-sided dice. You're going to need to have one, uh, you're going to need to have a group of six-sided dice, though, of a, a easy-to-spot, different color than all the rest. Now, they do sell their own sets of dice. These are the dice they sell, uh, black ones for regular skill and attribute dice, yellow for the stress dice. And now, while uh, they're not necessary, these are really fun. I did do a review of these, so check that out. I'll put a link at the end of this video to the review of the dice. But I highly recommend the stress dice because these yellow make them stand out significantly. And they both have a special symbol on the six for success and a special symbol on the on the one of a face hugger, which is awesome for us. Uh, you succumbing to stress. The regular skill dice they sell have a normal one because ones are not bad on regular dice, but a success symbol on the six. Now, the way it works is you grab a number of dice equal to your attribute, your skill, and possibly some equipment might give you extra dice too. So you might say, well, I got four for my attribute, I get four dice. I got two for my skill, I get two more dice. I got one for my equipment, I get one more die. Then you add your stress level. And so if your current stress level is three, for instance, you grab three stress dice. You roll the dice, you're looking for sixes. Sixes on either type of die is a success. Extra sixes would do things like extra damage in combat or give you extra cool perks if it's just a regular skill roll. Like, for instance, um, giving you bonuses to similar uh, skill rolls in the future or never having to roll again for the exact same type of skill roll in the future or if it's in combat doing extra damage or things like that but ones on the stress dice are really bad they make you roll on the stress table you roll a six-sided die you add your current stress level and you see what happens when your stress level is pretty low uh, often it's not that bad you just you get the jitters but you can carry on but as it gets worse and worse you actually start to have really negative effects like freezing like a deer in the headlights panicking and running away dropping whatever equipment you're having and not even noticing you dropped it things like that which can be very detrimental to your character when they're facing a giant alien monstrosity wanting to eat their brains or their lungs or their liver or any part of them really Humans are tasty. So the thing is that uh, this this is a very easy system to, to play. Now, if you roll on most skill rolls and you miss, you're allowed to push your luck. And you can pick up the dice and roll again 
Uh, but you must add one to your stress level, which means you immediately add another stress die. So you're, it, so doing that will make your stress level go up. In addition, very traumatic things happening, like if one of your uh, teammates gets killed in front of you by an alien monstrosity, or someone triggers the self-destruct mechanism on your ship, you're also going to get more stress dice, and these things are hard to get rid of. You need some calm time where you're not in any danger to rest and relax to remove stress dice. And in the first half of, of a cinematics game, you might find some of that, but later on when, when things start ramping up and things start getting crazy, you're not getting any, any rid of any stress dice, and you start getting tons of stress dice, you're going to start... Your hands are going to be shaking, you're not going to be able to succeed at many roles, and you're going to fail a lot, and you're going to start panicking, and then you're going to die. But it's okay, because if your character dies, usually what happens, unless it's really close to the end and most of the characters are dead, is the Game Master can hand you another one of the NPCs and be like, okay, you're going to be this character now. But that's how the skill system basically works. Then we get to go into the talents chapter. Talents are similar to perks or edges or... Um, you know, th those sort of things in other role-playing games where you, you it gives you an extra little ability that aids in certain skills or in certain uh, uh, areas. Then there's a full section on combat and panic and how that all works, which I just touched on a little bit while talking about the skills. Uh, the combat uh, and panic section goes into the very specifics of, of how range works and everything. It's actually quite fluid and quite easy to, to, to game master. I enjoy it quite a bit. Then we have a gear section. We have weapons and armor, other kinds of equipment, vehicles, and oh man, there are some great vehicles in here. Not only do you have the power loader and the APC, but you also have um, the drop ship and you have um, later on in a different section, I'm going to get to in a minute, you even have the, the full-size spaceships in here. Now, the next thing is a hard life amongst the stars. And in this area, we go into full detail about what it's like uh, in towns in, on the frontier, living in space, space station, uh, living on space stations, colonies, uh, what media is like, what religions there are out there, law, what law enforcement is like, what it's like to live under the thumb of a corporation, um, what it's like to try to... Uh, control and run a spaceship especially since often your spaceship is leased from a corporation you don't really own it um and then we've got space combat which if you're playing a, a, a campaign where you're marines you can get a ship like the sulaco from aliens and it tells you exactly how to do combat between ships so if you're you're in the sulaco and you're uh hunting down a pirate ship it's it's a very fast, very fun, very damage heavy system with the combat between ships. You you like do drive by shootings. You run, you drive by at high speed. It's slowing down to speeding up to try to get the right ranges, uh, so that if you're trying to destroy the enemy ship, you're trying to pro slow down and prolong the amount of time you're in range. While the other ship, if they're weaker than you, might just be trying to speed up and zip by you because it's really hard to to slow down and turn around once you've passed each other. Um, Really cool system. I very much enjoy that one as well. So then we've got a whole chapter on your job as the game mother uh, on on the principles of the game, the themes, the you know how to deal with stress, how to deal with uh, non-player you playing non-player characters. This is stuff that if you're old hat at being a game master, you can just kind of skim through. I read it cover to cover because I'm because I was going to review it, uh, but it's very well done. If you're new to get to role playing games, this this book does a really good job of introducing you to these concepts. Now, then the next we have governments and corporations. This is all storyline stuff that runs you through all the major governments of the alien universe, as well as the major corporations and other various powers in the universe. It's very interesting because it tells you how they all relate to each other. Because in some, some ways, certain corporations are, you know, just completely tied into certain governments. Then we've got a listing of lots of locations and planets and solar systems and space stations and all sorts of things. They fit tons of stuff in here from not just the movies, but they've got stuff in, in this book when it comes to especially the locations and and the, and, and references to specific ships and storyline bits. They've got stuff in here from the books, from the comic books, from video games. And even if you're familiar with the Alien series, you probably remember from back in the day, there was a, a script apparently floating around in Hollywood before Alien 3 was made. That could have wound up being Alien 3, but it wasn't, in which Ripley was going to land on a weird um, 
monastery space station where everything was covered in wood. So that never got made, but it was the idea of the no guns and why there was going to be no guns that did carry over to the actual Alien 3. Um, that weird monastery space station is in here. I mean, they went so deep with such deep dives and deep cuts into the Alien universe that not only did they take stuff from the comic books, books, and, not, and, and video games, they took stuff from unused movie scripts, which is, I mean, that's crazy awesome. What an attention to detail in this book. Then you've got the alien species. So it goes over, you've got the full, all the different versions of the xenomorphs. Then you have all the different uh, stuff for the neomorphs from, uh, of course, from the uh, alien covenant which was the sequel to prometheus the second of the prequel movies they have all the stuff for them if you want to run them and they also have uh the um the abominations which is like that one guy who was mutating in prometheus he was becoming a monstrosity himself they have them in there and they also have the the uh in addition they have the slightly different xenomorphs from the end of alien covenant they're not actually quite Full xenomorphs they're a little bit different and it has how their life cycle and their stats work as well uh, in addition there are other alien species in here which are especially good for if you're playing say a marine campaign and you you want to be getting sent out on other bug hunts to fight other monsters before you run into the xenomorphs so they have uh sw the swarm harvesters lion worms uh, one of my personal favorites, the Tanaki and Scorpions, which are literally giant scorpions on a desert planet. Um, these things are all really cool. Uh, the swarm is like a swarm of bugs that will eat you alive. Uh, harvesters are giant kind of mammalian burrowing monstrosities. Uh, lion worms are, yeah, they're giant worms. They're they're not gigantic, but they're like the size of, 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 of a huge uh, constrictor snake kind of thing. Then you've got a full explanation of how campaign play works, and the, then you have the you have um, in the campaign campaign play section a full explanation of a functional space station Nova uh, Novograd station, which gives you tons of story hooks if you want to use Novograd station as a place to start for a campaign or as a place to have a one-off cinematic scenario. That is a awesome resource. And then you have a mini, a mini cinematic scenario, shorter than the separate one that they're selling of uh, Chariot of the Gods. This is Chariot of the Gods, which I, I already reviewed and I highly recommend. It's a great one. They've got a smaller one in here as a one-off if you want to use it just to try out the rules. And it's a prequel to Aliens. It's called Hope's Last Day. And it's about what happened at Hadley's Hope. And now if you buy the Maps and Markers pack, which I did not know that this was linked to that when I was filming that. That, that review is coming soon. Um, but the Maps and Markers pack comes with a map of Hadley's Hope. So you can use it for Hope's Last Day, and that's what that is for. All right, so that's everything that's in the book. That's what you're going to get. That's what you're going to read if you go through here. This book is beautiful. Everything is full color. Every page is full color. You have giant full-page illustrations. Every chapter starts with a quote from one of the alien properties, which is fantastic. For instance, Space as Hell starts with the quote, I can't lie to you about your chances, but you have my sympathies ash and i love those when you get to the text you have full pages of text that are, are are black with a lot of times stars in the background with green text so it looks like the the uh screens of the computers in the alien universe which is awesome and they go with that retro sci-fi theme in here where that is what the computer screens look like uh they have lots of cool resources like timelines and whatnot in this book and just the production of this book in general is absolutely off the charts. This is a picture of the same class of spaceship that the Nostromo was in Alien. It is a full two pages with explanations of all different facets of that ship. This is, I'm, I'm just saying right now, this is one of the best produced role playing game books I have ever seen. I, I, it's I'd be hard pressed to pick another book that is more beautiful, better produced, 
than this one. Even on areas where you have tons of illustrations, uh, excuse me, tons of text, you will still have beautiful illustrations in on the page. So this one here, this is a specific kind of synthetic known as the Working Joe synthetic, where they don't even uh, try to make them look really human. They just look sort of vaguely human. This is made by a um, bargain basement alternative to say Cyberdyne systems called Siegson. Everything in here is awesome. They've thought of everything. They've included so much stuff. They even have, they have tables in here for rolling up your own um, random adventures, encounters, and even ra your own solar systems and planets and how to do that. So you, and it says, you know, you can of course pick what you want off the areas of the table if you want to design it yourself. But if you want to start by getting some inspiration, they you can roll on those tables to, to go for it. it. It's just amazingly fun. Um, is, is this book perfect no i did find a couple minor minor mistakes there was one minor issue i found in the gear section where the heavy pulse rifle uh was listed as having two different strengths one in the illustration for the pulse rifle where they gave a card with a quick breakdown of it and the other in the actual text on the table where it showed the pulse rifle now, um, the one of them, the one in the illustration, was the same strength as the normal pulse rifle. And as it's the heavy pulse rifle, the other text was one stronger. That's got to be the correct one. It's a heavy pulse rifle. It's got to be stronger than a regular pulse rifle. So that was pretty easy to figure out. But there, I mean, I don't want you to think I'm 100% raving about this like, like this is the, the most perfect game ever. Everybody makes mistakes. There's, there's a couple minor mistakes in here, but they're few and far between. The gameplay is fun. This is actually, in my opinion, hands down, the best horror-themed role-playing game I have ever had the pleasure to run. It, it mimics the feel of a horror movie so perfectly, and I enjoy it so much. And actually, I'd put this in my top three favorite role-playing games of all time. All time. It's that good. The, the rules are tight. The, the rules encourage role playing significantly, especially with the with the stress rules. They 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 are so perfect for the horror theme. It really feels like you're in an alien movie. I love this game. It's so amazing. <sighs> so we're to the part where I'm gonna 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 rate it. And at this point, you shouldn't be surprised when I'm gonna give it a ten out of ten. This is again one of my top three role playing games of all time. I'm not really sure where I where I place it along with the other two, um, but this is this is definitely my number one horror game of all time. This is fantastic. I am planning and stay tuned to watch for these. I'm planning to to record multiple cinematic one offs and post them here so you guys can fully see what full games of this is like because it is so much fun and I love it so much. Um, I really enjoy it. I highly recommend you check out this book. And you know what? Recently, I just passed by. by 2,000 subscribers on the channel and I'm planning to do multiple giveaways and I can't think of a better giveaway to kick off my giveaways than giving away a copy of the alien role-playing game because of how much I love this game and how much I know you guys will enjoy it as well I mean I this is so easy to recommend to people if you like the alien universe and you like role-playing games buy this game this game is amazing it's it's phenomenal you will enjoy it so here's what you got to do if you want to win the copy you have to first send me an email. My email will be in the description down below. In the email, the subject line should say Alien RPG Giveaway, and the body should just be the name of your YouTube sign on. Then you have to like this video, be subscribed to the Board Game Captain, and comment on this video telling me one of your favorite quotes. From the alien movies you could also comment on this video if you just have a regular comment that you want to uh that you want to make about this video or about the alien role-playing game and that'll count as an entry as long as you sent me the email as well but if you can't think of something to comment comment about your one of your favorite quotes from one of the most quotable series of movies of all time and you will be entered to win the the drawing will be in two weeks from the release of this video i'm going to put the actual date and time up on the screen now so you can see when the drawing will be and what's going to happen is i'm going to just pick a random person and i'm going to email you back to get your shipping address and then i'm going to purchase you a copy from an online seller to have it shipped to you if and i know these are going to be selling like hotcakes if they're i'm not able to find one available i will instead just send you 
a electronic gift certificate for the amount of the book so that when it comes back in stock, you'll be able to purchase it yourself. Either way, though, I'm going to be buying one of you a copy. I want to spread the love of this game. This game is amazing. I, I got my copy for free, so I'm going to buy one for one of you because you guys are awesome. And because of you, I have passed 2,000 subscribers, so I do want to give you guys a big thank you. So there you have it. 10 stars. This is a rave review from me. I absolutely adore this game. Again, if you have any kind of comments, questions, or concerns on the game or on this video, put them in the comments down below. And remember to enter the contest. And if you and of course subscribe to the board game captain, hit that little bell icon on my channel so you get alerts and updates every time I upload a new video. Until next time, game on.